Well, hello everyone. This is uh, Chris with the Ancient Scholar. Uh, these uh, series of videos uh, labeled uh, Mechanical Ventilation uh, Laboratory um, are actually some companion videos that I'm doing um, in conjunction in conjunction with a, a class that I'm um, helping to teach on mechanical ventilation uh, for uh, some student respiratory therapists um, over the summer. They actually do five weeks of um, a didactic in clinical lab. Uh, they do two days a week in lecture and two days a week in lab. And I'm uh, teaching the laboratory component. And then uh, the second, or the, the summer session two, they spend five weeks, uh, I believe four days a week, um, somewhere around 50 hours a week, um, in the hospital working on uh, uh, adults who are in the intensive care unit and mechanically ventilated. So I thought I'd do a series of, of videos as kind of a companion companion videos to the to the lectures uh, that I'll be doing in class. So I actually kind of have the notes pulled up here uh, that, that I'm going off of in the class and I just kind of uh, do, do just um, some companion um, lecturing uh, just to give out little information and that way you know people can come here and um, if they have any questions or whatever they can kind of review some of the high points uh, that we've gone over in the course. So hopefully I, I hope people find this helpful. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and start off with the kind of the first lecture and, and kind of start off with the question: Well, what is mechanical ventilation? And I think the simplest definition of mechanical ventilation is it's just an artificial form of breathing, of assisted breathing, uh, that makes use of some sort of machine. And that that rule will keep it simple. That you know is a fundamental definition of what mechanical ventilation is. Uh, there are two major types of mechanical ventilation: something known as negative pressure ventilation and positive pressure ventilation. Let's just talk about negative pressure ventilation first. The, these types of ventilators have been around for quite a while and actually uh, were developed in response to the polio epidemic. As we know, polio is was a uh, is almost been basically eradicated um, through immunization. But ba basically, what it was it was a devastating neurological disease, um, and a lot of people that developed polio, of course. Uh, part of the the, the, the constellation of, of problems that occur in, uh, in response to polio were um, compromise of you know like the phrenic nerve um, compromised the diaphragm compromised to the intercostal muscles and, and, and inability to effectively ventilate and so we made these negative pressure ventilators to um, help effectively ventilate people there are two types of negative pressure ventilators there's something known as a tank and a, a chest cuirass. So the, the tank ventilator, uh, negative pressure ventilator, is known as the iron lung. Uh, and it's literally a large iron tank that the patient is sealed in. Uh, their head comes out and there's a seal around the head. And then what the tank, what goes on inside of the tank is um, negative pressure. There's negative pressure inside of the tank. And of course, that negative pressure is negative um, when compared to atmospheric pressure. Uh, when that negative pressure is applied, well, what do we have? We have uh, Boyle's Law occurring. Uh, negative pressure, uh, decreased pressure equals increased volume. So the pressure around the thoracic cavity is negative. The thoracic cavity then expands in response to that. Air rushes in and the lungs inflate. And this is, is kind of handy because this is very analogous to how we normally breathe. We uh, Human beings normally breathe through a negative pressure mechanism. The diaphragm drops, intercostal muscles well, mainly the diaphragm, we'll keep it simple, the diaphragm drops, creates a, ne a negative pressure compared to atmospheric pressure, um, air rushes in or is uh, pushed in to the lungs, depending on how you look at it, both ways are correct, uh, sucked in or blown in, and lungs expand, and then the pressure becomes positive in the thoracic cavity, and in accordance with Bo Boyle's law, uh, increased pressure equals decreased volume, and that's actually how these negative pressure ventilators work. They negative pressure, we inhale, uh, we inhale for a certain amount of time, set, set in the, the, the ventilator, and then we release that pressure, that negative pressure, and then that causes us to exhale. Uh, now, some of the issues that we can run into with, say, the, um, the tank or the iron lung is we have very limited access. We basically have a patient placed in a hermetically sealed environment. We have little to no access to most of the patient uh, with the exception of you know their head that's sticking out, but this is clearly a, a very big disadvantage. Uh, of course, some of the advantages are you don't have to necessarily have an intubated patient. You have a patient that 
can talk and can communicate and at least has an airway, but um, there's certainly some very severe limitations. Now, the other type of negative pressure ventilator is, an, is what's known as a chest cuirass, and it's literally just an apparatus um, that is um, applied to the chest, and they usually have a couple of tubes that go in there, and it does exactly the same thing as the iron lung, is it, it creates a negative pressure in there, we inhale, pressure is released, we exhale. Um, this is handier because um, only the thoracic cavity is encapsulated, so the patient has uh, use of their arms and legs. Again, still quite a few limitations to this um, type of negative pressure uh, ventilating device, you know, because you are, you know, hooked up to this large cuirass and your mobility is still limited, but you do have better access and uh, you do have improved mobility. Okay, so those are some, and there are actually a few iron lungs and cuirasses around, so it's, it, you can still run into these uh, on occasion. Uh, the newer types of ventilators, of course, are what we call positive pressure ventilators. So, what is positive pressure ventilation? Well, the easiest way to look at positive pressure ventilation is it's something that blows air. It blows air into the lungs. Now, how do we normally breathe? We breathe normally, physiologically, through a negative pressure mechanism. Um, so, are there some issues, potentially, with positive pressure? Absolutely. We are taking the normal physiologic mechanisms of the body and turning them upside down. We're doing a 180. We're blowing air in. We're putting a positive pressure in the thoracic cavity when we really ought to have negative pressure. So, clearly, this creates a lot of issues. Um, you know, this can create problems with overinflating the lungs. Um, when we increase the pressure inside of the intrathoracic cavity, what does this do? Well, this puts pressure on the heart, puts pressure on the great vessels, the vena cava, and this decreases venous preload to the heart. If I decrease preload to the heart, what do I do to cardiac output? Well, ultimately, I decrease the cardiac output. Um, and things, uh, let's say somebody has um, a head injury, and they need to have a good blood pressure and good cardiac output to have good perfusion in their brain. Uh, clearly, if I decrease the venous preload, if they're on positive pressure ventilation, this can potentially compromise cerebral perfusion, can compromise perfusion to all kinds of organ systems. Uh, the, the, the lungs themselves, the kidneys, even the heart, myocardial perfusion, and so on and so forth. There's also a risk of something known as volume trauma, where I'm putting too much volume into the lungs, and I'm, I'm essentially fracturing um, the alveoli, and then I'm causing a whole cascade of inflammatory changes to occur that could ultimately lead to conditions like um, ARDS or ARDS. Um, there's also something, an older concept, kind of known as barotrauma, and this is uh, basically where I have really high pressures in the lungs, and I, I essentially I pop things, and this is, this is um, things like um, pneumothoraces, pneumomediastinum, um, and, and so on and so forth. So those definitely are some major pitfalls to positive pressure ventilation that we have to be careful about. Okay, guys, I'm going to go ahead and cut it off here. In the next video, we'll talk about um, the types of ventilators. Uh, take care, and thank you.